Today we're going to look at a certain method for finding sums of divergent series known as Cesaro summation. But let's look at the big idea first. So our main goal here is to study a series, so I've written it as the series A sub n, via some related sequence. Now the standard related sequence to study this series is the sequence of partial sums. And so we'll define that because we'll use that. So it'll be Sn, which is the sum of the first n terms. But we want to study this via some sort of non-standard related sequence, and that'll be this sequence which we call Tn. And it'll be 1 over n times S1 plus S2 up to Sn. In other words, it's the arithmetic mean of the first n partial sums. And, well, hopefully, this new sequence Tn will allow us to have some sort of different way of studying our original series. And so, well, what do I mean by hopefully? Well, it would be nice if when the limit of the partial sums equals s, in other words, this series converges to a sum s, then the limit of the Tn terms also equals s. And in that case, this sequence Tn is a useful tool for studying our series. Now you might say, well, why would we use this tool? Well, perhaps we can show that the sequence of partial sums converges, but we can't find its value. So there's a number of ways to show that a sequence converges without finding its value. Perhaps it's a Cauchy sequence or something. But if we can't find the value of the Sn, perhaps we can find the value of the Tn convergence, which would give us another way of finding the sum of the original series. Now, something weird happens if the sequence Tn converges, whereas the sequence Sn does not converge. And in that case, perhaps we've uncovered some sort of hidden meaning of that divergent series well, the sum of a n. And, well, this is essentially what we want to do today, is to look at this Cesaro summation, prove this third dot here, that that actually occurs, and then look at some examples. So I've laid out over here essentially the definitions that we talked about over here via our exploration. And now we're ready to start with a couple of examples. So our first example will be the geometric series, which is the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over 2 to the n. So this is, has a common ratio of a 1 half. So I think it's well known that this absolutely converges, and it converges to the number 1. And that's because that is 1 half over 1 minus half. In other words, the first term over 1 minus the common ratio. That being said, let's maybe look at the sequence of partial sums and then this related T sequence and check that this related T sequence also converges to one. Okay, so let's notice that S1 is equal to a half. That's the first term. S2 is equal to a half plus a quarter, which is three quarters. S3 is equal to half plus quarter plus eight you can check that that is 7 eighths. And then S4, well that'll be the first three terms, which is 7 eighths, plus 1 16th, so that's 15 sixteenths. So looking at this, and you can prove this main little sub-result by induction if you want to, what we'll see is that the nth partial sum is equal to 1 minus 1 over 2 to the n. That's exactly what we have here. Notice this is one minus one over two to the four. This is one minus one over two cubed, and then back you know, through this one and this one. Okay, but notice if we take the limit as n goes to infinity here, we definitely get the number one because one over two to the n will tend towards zero. Okay, so now let's calculate our Tn sequence. And so that's going to be 1 over n times the sum as k goes from 1 to n of sk. So I like put this together into summation notation because 
we're going to sum this up using a trick that we did up here. Okay, so let's see what we have. This is gonna be one over n, and then we'll have the sum as k goes from one to n of one minus one over two to the k, just given the fact that we found this closed form of the sequence of partial sums. Okay, nice. But check it out. This is gonna be exactly one over n, and then if we sum one up to itself n times, we'll get the number n, and then minus, if we sum this, that's gonna be half plus quarter plus third, all the way up to one over two to the n. That's the partial sum that we had up here. So that's gonna be minus one plus one over two to the n because, well, the minus sign flips that subtraction. But check it out. This is gonna turn into one minus one over n plus one over n times two to the n, distributing that n through. But now if we let n tend towards infinity, this pretty clearly tends towards one. So, you know, via example, we've shown that the sequence of partial sums and then this related sequence have the same limit. Well, so that's good. That ex at least shows that in this case, everything, you know, which should happen is happening. Okay, so now let's look at another example where our original series does not converge. So for our next example, we're gonna look at something called Grandi's sum. And that would be the sum as n goes from one to infinity of minus one to the n plus one. And so this diverges, you know, simply from a geometric series test, but we'll also show that it diverges using a sequence of partial sums. Notice this looks like one minus one plus one minus one plus one and so on and so forth. So let's observe that the first partial sum is the number one. And then the second partial sum is the number zero. I think that's pretty clear. And then the third partial sum is the number one again. So looking at this, this means that the even partial sums are one, and then the odd partial sums are zero. So we didn't prove that, but I think that follows pretty easily. But what do we have here? Well, if something oscillates between zero and one, then that means that its limit, in other words, the limit as n goes to infinity of s sub n, does not exist because it's never centering on a single value. Okay, well, now let's look at that related t sequence. And so we're gonna break this up into even cases and odd cases as well. So notice we'll have t sub 2n will be equal to 1 over 2n, and then we'll have s1 plus s2 plus s3 plus s4, all the way up s2n minus 1 plus s2n. But let's look at this. All of these odd terms, oh, I got these mixed up here. So the odd terms are one, and then the even terms are zero. So notice that all of these odd terms are equal to one. So this S1 is equal to one. This S3 is equal to one. This S2n minus one is equal to one, and so on and so forth. Whereas all of these even terms are equal to zero. So we've got a zero there. Here we have a zero. All the way up here for s sub 2n we have a zero. So how many ones are we adding together? Well, we're adding together exactly n ones here because we've got n of these odd terms. So if we're adding n ones to itself, then what we have here is n over 2n, which is equal to a half. So that means the even terms of this sequence are all equal to a half. Let's look at the odd terms of this sequence. So we'll do t sub 2n plus 1. So let's see, that'll be 1 over 2n plus 1. And then, well, we have the same kind of thing happening inside of these parentheses, except we've got one additional 1, and that's from the s sub 2n plus 1. But if here we add it up to a total value of n, then adding another one will give us an n plus one. 
So this is equal to n plus one over two n plus one. But I think it's pretty clear that if we take the limit here, we get one half. So notice since the odd terms and the even terms both tend towards one half, well, these actually just stay equal to a half. That tells us that this sequence itself converges to one half. In other words, the limit as n goes to infinity of t sub n equals one half. And sometimes, even though by the precise definition of convergence, this series diverges, sometimes this series is given the value of one half. When you're working with different methods of summing divergent series. And now let's also notice that if we were to not think too hard, and we were to uh, apply geometric series summation to this, we would get the starting term, which is one over one minus the common ratio, which is negative one, which is also equal to a half. So we would achieve the same value. So I think that's pretty interesting. Okay, so now that we've done this, what I'd like to do is show, well, that if uh, S sub n converges, then T sub n converges to the same value. Okay, so like I said, now we'll prove that if the limit as n goes to infinity of S sub n equals S, which is a real number, that is it's a non-infinite limit, then the limit of the T sequence is the same. And we're gonna do this using like an epsilon n approach. Okay. So let's say given some epsilon bigger than zero, we can find some natural number n such that if lowercase n is bigger than or equal to uppercase n, then the absolute value of s sub n minus s is less than epsilon. Okay, so now let's also observe that in this case, we have t sub n minus s. Well, we'll actually show that this is also less than epsilon. And so it turns out that the same value of capital N here works. Okay, so let's rewrite this as follows. So let's take the tn and write it via its definition. So this is gonna be one over n, and then the sum as k goes from one to n of s sub k. And then let's take this s and write it kind of in a similar way to this right here. So in other words, I'm gonna write this as one over n, and then the sum as k goes from one to n of s. That might seem silly, but notice what we're doing here is adding s to itself n times and then dividing by n, but that's just the same thing as having s. And now we're gonna push these two sums together and we're gonna take the one over n out as well. So we're gonna have one over n and then the absolute value of the sum as k goes from one to n of s k minus s. Now we're gonna apply the triangle inequality and the triangle inequality will say that this is less than or equal to one, one over n, and then the sum as k goes from one up to n of the absolute value of s k minus s. And now we're going to add an assumption here, and that is that n is strictly bigger than capital N. So what will that do? Well, that means that we can break this sum into a sum from one to capital N and then a sum of everything else. So let's do that. So we'll have one over N and then we'll have the sum as K goes from one to capital N of absolute value of S K minus S plus one over N and then the sum as k goes from capital N plus one up to lowercase n of s k minus s. Okay, good. But now notice that the capital N is fixed here, and that makes this just equal to some constant value. We don't know exactly what it is. In fact, it doesn't really matter exactly what it is. It's just a constant. I'll maybe call that constant C. But then let's also observe 
that since all of the indices here are larger than our capital N, we know that difference is less than epsilon. So each of these differences, like I said, are less than epsilon. Okay, so let's see what that's gonna give us. So this whole thing is gonna be less than some constant over N, okay? And then let's see, plus, well, we're adding epsilon to itself, N minus capital N times, so N minus capital N over lowercase n times epsilon, the lowercase n from this right here. Okay, so we've got something like this going on. But now let's observe that this term right here is less than one, so this whole thing is less than c over n plus epsilon. And now you could do one of two things here. We're gonna take the easy way out. You could introduce another capital N to pin this object maybe smaller than epsilon, making the whole thing smaller than two epsilon. Or you could maybe just roughly apply a limit here and let n tend towards infinity and notice this whole thing tends towards epsilon. But then after applying that limit, we have the absolute value of Tn minus s is strictly less than epsilon, which is exactly where we needed to end to finish the proof of this claim. Okay, so let's maybe finish this video by checking if Cesaro summation will reproduce the famous result about the sum of the natural numbers. Now we're gonna look at this famous result of the sum of the natural numbers and see if it can be maybe explained using Cesaro summation. So we've got this sum as n goes from one to infinity of n. So in other words, one plus two plus three plus four plus five, so on and so forth. So if you recall like famously done on the internet many, many times, this should equal negative one over 12. If we find some sort of way of making sense of this obviously divergent series. But let's see what we get with a Cesaro summation. Okay, so let's notice that S sub one is equal to one. S sub two is equal to one plus two. So in other words, three. And well, in fact, S sub n is one plus two all the way up to n. Now, luckily there's a standard formula for that, which is maybe the sum of a first n natural numbers. In other words, the nth triangular number, which is n times n plus one over two. So I won't work that out. And then recall that our t sub n is one over n, and then the sum as n goes from one to infinity of s sub k, sorry. And then the sum as k goes from one to n of s sub k. In other words, k squared plus k over two, just to make everything simple. So now let's bring the two out and we have one over two n. Now we can apply the rule for the sum of the squares, which is well known. It's n times n plus one times two n plus one over six. And then the sum of the first n natural numbers, just one more time is n times n plus one over two. But notice if we were to multiply everything out here, we would have something like this. We would have one over six, and then we would have n squared plus what I'll call lower terms. How do we know it's gonna be n squared? Well, notice this will net us an n cubed. Over n gives us n squared. Furthermore, this two will cancel this two, leaving us the, this one over six. But that's not really what we're interested in here. What we're interested in is this kind of obviously tends towards infinity, which means this series up here is not Cesaro summable. So in other words, it will not help us achieve this value of minus one over 12. So for that, we would need other methods of summations of divergent series. So maybe post in the comments if you'd like to see one of those. That's a good place to stop.